Hello and welcome back to the letter. And we just finished uh, basically messing up for realizing that I pretty much messed up this whole playthrough. <laughs> kind, of, kind of expected because I suck at making choices, but um, yeah. We didn't get Ashton to be with uh, Becca, or at least have them kiss. And then we also didn't get to have Ashton be with Isabel at all. Or at least not now, apparently, but how it'll go. I have a feeling what's going to happen by the end of this is um, Isabel's probably going to go back home with her family and help them out. Rebecca's probably going to continue schooling. And Ash is probably going to continue just uh, with his investigations and probably never really have gone that far with being an officer. It'll probably still be the same given that it's supernatural, so I doubt he's not really going to get anywhere. But yeah, with how things have gone, I think that's how the game's going to end up playing with my playthrough. I mean, and then with that, God, that's not, no. It's the only one we've killed this whole, throughout this whole game. So, let's continue. Let's see what's happened after uh, Ash and Isabel left uh, the butler in the attic. How we're still going to come back. When we make our way downstairs, tricky considering the stairs to the attic are a bit old. When messed up and anyone might end up slipping and falling. Lucky if that's all that'll happen to you. Stairs this deep, a broken neck is the likely outcome. Thankfully Isabel, Isabel is here to guide me through the darkness. She knows this place better than anyone. After all, despite all the misfortune it has brought us. Careful, the floorboards over there aren't very sturdy. Right, cue the same board I'm stepping on creaks and suddenly breaks. Pieces falling somewhere with the dull thumb. Oh shit. Scumbag wouldn't be too happy about that. Oh, <sighs> foot. See? I told you so. You never listened to me. They renovated the whole mansion and they can't even replace one tiny part of the house. Why don't you file a complaint to BRC then? I'm sure <laughs> they'd be thrilled to hear it. You know, it was such a rush job. But the winds. Outside, the winds have intensified. Even from here, I can hear the gusts battering the window in the attic. Makes you wonder why, up until now, the only person we've encountered in this house is the butler. Although, to some degree, that makes sense. He's in charge of running the place. Where are the other servants, though? The storm, wouldn't anyone want to stay inside? The assumption is they're all asleep. Oh yeah, because they did have a room set up for the servants, so... The rat I've taken doesn't really pass by the room they're likely assigned as servants' quarters, however. They have also heightened security. First off, I brushed it off earlier thinking they'll be posted a lot closer to where the master's rooms are, but the second floor is devoid of anyone as well. As if everything happened out of this house has suddenly disappeared overnight. More importantly, where's that scumbag? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Neither do I. The fact that we're here right in the fucking middle of it makes me all the more queasy. That feeling only escalates once we reach the landing and spell swings the door open. Oh, we're back in the kitchen now, okay. She pauses abruptly right in the doorway that almost ran into her. Look of confusion in her as she looks finally around the place wordless taking in her surrounding. Each turn shift of her eyes Sh shoulder only grow tenser and a look off apprehension slowly dawns Isabella, on her. Isabella, what are you- We aren't supposed to be here. Aw. Sure enough, when I look up for staying right in the kitchen, pots, pants and all. The ghost did this, didn't it? Corner, Rebecca watches almost as surprised to see us. Amirian? Yep. Hell is also with her, with her. I just realized the only people we really saved are a bunch of girls and Ash is with them. <laughs> I just realized that. Hell is also with her, of course. She didn't listen to me even if I've already exceeded the 15 minutes we've agreed on. Although color and drinks seem to have already turned to her, enough for her to be able to stand unassisted. Oh, they're in the kitchen, so I have a feeling maybe they snacked on some food. 
Uh, the empty play on the counter appears to have played up. Yep, <laughs> on that good news. Guess as for the other one, I, however, plays that I am that she has had the sense to wait and not venture deeper into the mansion. Can't keep out my. Can't, I, I can't keep roll my eyes at her. Although she preempts me with the reprimed of her own. Did you really think you could hide this from us? Maybe. I had to, Becca. You know. If Isabella hadn't asked G and that old guy didn't slip, none of us would even have any idea. So the first thing the two of you did is go straight here? Yep. Of course not, but Isabella insisted. Oh, okay. And it didn't even occur to you to stop her? I tried, all right. She was out the door before I could say anything. And how did you guys even get in here? Well, the exchange of luck, one that I... Oh, I wonder if they somehow got here because all the guards are gone. With an exchange look, one that I absolutely don't like. Yeah, it's Isabel who speaks up, albeit with a bit of hesitation. We... we heard someone scream, Ash. It led us here. Without warning, the door behind us slams shut. Fuck. We need to get out of here. Screw right. We need to get these people out of here. Well, like we're in the kitchen, we have two ways out. The back door and the cellar offers. Except the hatch won't budge. Pull it at it, now it does it does the back door. Something has locked it firmly on the other side. Becca also gives it a few tries, even with the, with help from Isabel, won't open. It's a long bout of silence in which we all simply look at each other, like sharing the same thoughts. Traps. Something or someone has intentionally led us here. Fuck. The same moment, this realization dawns and something shifts again. This ghost is gonna fucking kill everyone here. That's updated. Uh, maybe this will tell what the fuck's gonna occur here. And nope. But okay. Also, I guess that updated too. I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot to check. Uh, so yeah, blood. Every nook and cranny. For every surface and in, in every inch of the floor. This time, unlike the first that I've seen, it rains and gradually the whole room begin to reek of that familiar metallic scent, sharp suffocating. Oh god, that was creepy. So around us every object, including the cupboards, have stirred to rattle as well. The sound from outside, foreboding rumble of thunder, even the howling winds have begun to fade away, despite whispers and shouts and cries of pain. Though inaudible, each beat and note bombards every crevice of my head with big images and sounds. There's no time to make sense of everything, however. Ray shining fueled purely by adrenaline, barking oars and making a break for the door that leads to the next room, the dining. Should take us straight to the foyer where the main door is. Move! Run! Right in front of us, the mansion has started to change and we're in the thick of it. However, instead of the dining room, it's supposed to open to. The bedroom? The bedroom will against us instead. Image that lasts only about a second before blood begins to seep into the room. Filtering into the walls, trickling from every nook and cranny. I mean, they could exit through there. Maybe, unless they have to jump. I don't know how high that is. Uh, filtering into the wall, streaking from every nook and cranny, everywhere furniture shakes and every beam rattles. Before he'd step back from the horror gradually unfolding in front of us, the door slams shuts. This ghost is super powerful that it could lead them to different rooms. So a lot of thud bringing a sense of dread and chill creeping up in each of us. Along with it, another realization the whole place is reordering itself. With the door closed tight behind us, showing us no sign of budging, even through sheer force. There's no chance but to go for it and hope to all gods that I'll lead us to the end exit. Till then, running the only thing we can do, spurred by nothing but fear and a sense of desperation to live. It's useless, Ashton Frey. That's only for Ashton. With each room we pass, it only becomes apparent that this house has no intention of letting us leave. We're just all here and we've fallen for it. Now it's playing a little game with us. Sordid form of amusement. Whom? <laughs> Their laughter are the only thing we could hear. With every hole we cross, 
and door we slide open. The hope of finding an exit merely dwind dwindles and slot dwindles. God, my hep is useless here. Useless here. It's a fucking genius I am. A fucking person trust I am. All of those, they mean nothing in the face unknown. You finally figured it out. Huh, Ashton Frey. This thing is a mind Just reader, I swear. We'll eventually die because of you. And you are going to die alone. <laughs> Did you not use Zach's voice? God damn it. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> you know it's true, though. I wonder if everyone's hearing their own thing or Ashen's alone going crazy like this. All of it. It's why all you can do is tell us to shut up. You don't want to hear a single word because you're already aware of it. Saying the same thing again when we're in the cellar. You can't even admit it to yourself. Who's the coward now? You are, again. <laughs> but no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to save anyone. More gruesome the place turns, the bleaker our chances to bleed it. Oh, and the windows are closed this time. All those screams fill our ears as we pass by. Words from a time when people long ago laced with nothing but pure agony, calling out, reaching out to us. Their voice is almost too real as if we're not the only ones trapped here. But there are other begging for release. This wretched place. Maybe it's all just a show? A taste of what will what we will eventually be, souls forever held captive, never-ending nightmare. <laughs> mother, I don't mother. Take me with me, please. I still hear her. She's here. So she's gone crazy. Help me! Help me, please! This is what the curse is? What it means for all of us? The lair, not a morbid cry for help, but an invitation? Begging for unsuspecting souls to be dragged into this place of horrors? Be put under centuries and centuries of torment and agony? Suddenly dying a painful death seems preferable, enticing than ending up here living a tortured existence. Perhaps it's all the same. Still, hope warms its way into me. A use. A usual thing for someone like me. After going through the countless doors and corridors, every little sign of hope I'm willing to cling to, as long as they'll just get us out of here. Back to the dining room again. How long have we been? Uh, how long have we been running? How long since we've left the kitchen? At some point, I've lost track of time. With the windows barred tight and the sounds lifting in the air, nothing but shouts and shrieks is—it's impossible to tell. Not that it matters when an end is in sight. Shells and furnishes that bar the door, each stained with blood and gore. That situation that isn't desperate as it is, find a different way out. But there's still a gap left at the topmost part of the part for a person to go through, as long as you as long as you use the shells to climb. It's an exit, all right. But too obvious of an exit, I don't like it. From here, I can spite the familiar walls of the foyer. Relief, only relief washes over me. Although my legs have been stained taut by all that running, every bone and muscle in my body ache. There's only one, there's only an easy a sense of tension relieving wall. While energy back flows to me again at the sight of an end, no sooner am I leading us out of it. The bell helps McCullough first. Sitting her up and through the gap before giving a hand to Rebecca. The moment the ladies are in, I nod for her to go through. Go ahead. I'll watch your back. Surprisingly, surprisingly, she does that without any protest. Not that there's any need to, sometime after entering this room, the whole place has calmed down. The walls and whispers silence to deafening. I'm not letting my guard down until every everyone's on the other side of this nightmare safe. For all I know, it's me. This may just be a calm before another storm. Without further incident, however, a spell makes it to the other side and I'm falling after her. However odd this hush is, I turn my back from it and climb up. It's a tight fit, but I managed to squeeze myself in. The knees remains though. 
It's the adrenaline still coursing through me. How easy everything has been after living through that nightmare, fleeting as it is. But for some reason, something's still nagging at me. Call it detective's instinct or my training or whatnot. I have a feeling something's going to happen and catch us unprepared. Unconsciously, before dropping down on the better side of the stream, hand shifts to the gun at my hip. These things have never failed me before. If he haven't la landed firmly on the floor when- Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. People these days, in my own home, can you believe it? Oh, what is Luke gonna do? I feel so left out. A chill sleeps into every vein of my body. All of a sudden, every ache, every pain returns to me tenfold. And my knees threaten to bulk at the sound of his voice. Hold on, because I'm curious if somehow the previous people are going to help in some way. Let's see. Diana. Um, Isabel, she's mad with Luke. Marianne. I don't know. Given that we couldn't get. We got like the more normal outcome, if anything. Or slightly above normal, I guess, with Ashton and Rebecca and Isabel. So maybe this will be sort of like above normal. And then Rebecca is super good with Luke. <laughs> Chose all the right words with him. And then Ashton is the first time I'm actually meeting him like this. It's so all of a sudden, every ache, every pain returns to me tenfold, and my knees threaten to buckle at the sound of his voice. Though well, Pierre is friendly, I know it. I know it is anything but. He does not spend investiga investigating a man like him for over a year and holding grudge against him for more, without knowing everything about him. The quirk his habits are familiar with all of them. Right now, Luke fucking rise beyond pissed. Shifting my gaze upwards is nearly too painful knowing the danger. Not to me, but to those who have been lured in here by that curse. What? I really hope if somehow if I had Zack, this wouldn't be the situation. I really hope Hen catches my eyes first. Next to the s next to that smarmy smile on his face, I hold my call of Rebecca and Isabel at gunpoint. Sigh enough to lodge a painful thorn up my throat. But too complacent to focus on the things I've completely set aside. Like that scumbag will not be too pleased to see us here without knowing our reasons. But even with those, good intentions, curses, and ghostly apprehensions aside, we're still trespassing in his home. Maybe Luke is a bad guy! Or maybe he's possessed like I've been thinking this whole time. So the question is, he's even aware that the whole his household has somehow disappeared and he might be able to, he might be the only one here. Likely not. Fuck. You know, the people he knows among the crowd, there's a significant effort in him not to simply shoot everyone in sight. And really, Daisy? Even you? What would Kylie say? Luke, this isn't what you're thinking. You have to listen to us. There's something going on here. Well, obviously, why else would people be trespassing in my home? What about little Lily over there, then? What's your excuse? Checking back if your clients are doing okay? Is that it? Is this what this is? Oh, he's going to ask everyone. We're doing good, by the way. Sir, please. Oh, please what? We need to get out of this place. You need to leave. Ta -ta -ta -ta, good enough excuse, darling. You people are the ones who need to get out of my sight. I mean, that was our plan. Don't worry. I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Can't say the same for feathers here, What's though. really now? Where people need to stop breaking into my house. This is how you want to start the week. Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? Casually, he waves the handgun at them as if it's just a mere toy and his words are no threat. Safety is off on his. Nothing's stopping him from pushing through with his words. Call me paranoid, but at a slight gesture, I draw my own and level it at him. Finger on the trigger and ready to release the safety catch in case things go south.
Oh, and now he's pulling it towards us. He's quick to train his own on me, though, and just like that, grass stands still. Now, now, feathers, manners. Oh, I hope they help us knock his ass out. But if anything, I imagine it might only be with Zack. I have a feeling because we don't have Zack, we're going to lose Ashton. You're in no position to be pointing that gun at people. You're fucking pointing a gun at us, so he's in a good position. Why don't you put yours down first, and then we'll talk about manners. Oh, he talks back the gall. You know, your kind pisses me off so much. Doing him right now will be so worth it. It's the way he stares at me like I'm a damn pest. But this isn't what I've come here for. I'm not murderer, as much as I loathe them. Not the kind who will kill people in cold blood for my own gain or amusement. The law will bring him what he deserves one of these days. At the moment, however, we're all in the same boat with, with this curse and he needs to understand that. The longer we stand here, more time wasting and losing, something we don't have much of. How can I convince him? The scum is full of himself, he prefers to hear the sound of his own voice more than those of the people around him, no matter how much sense they make. Alright, where's Hannah in all of this? Oh, I forgot. She might help us. Probably the only way I can make him listen is if I beg. No way in hell that's happening. Oh my god. <laughs> This is where he dies, doesn't it? Oh, the thing is... I have a feeling if I try to disarm him, he's going to fire the gun, because from that distance, I don't think you can get in, catch up in time to disarm him. I have a feeling he's going to get shot. But at the same time, I have a feeling with how Luke is, I imagine I'm going to choose Beg, and Ashton's going to try to convince him that's, uh, and then Luke's not gonna give a fuck into fire at him. Either way I see this, I don't see a good outcome. But one of them is the better option, I know, and he won't get shot, but the way I'm seeing this... Oh, no... We are going to try back. To please him. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's not the only one at risk here, however. Shebeka, Isabel, Akala is here as well. We're all knowing victims to this fucking curse. In no position to pick who, who to save, and who I should simply let die. So in my pride, take a few hits and I can set aside my beef this asshole. Take very slowly, I lower my pistol. Though still on the edge and ready, in case he does something, Doing my best to assume a less aggressive stance. Hey, listen, right. I need you to... Swallow your pride. You broke into my house, and somehow, somehow, you expect me to listen like a good little boy. Yep. I you get touched in the head, Feathers? I'm not the one breaking laws here. Look here, fucker. If I wanted you <laughs> dead, I could have done it so many times already. In fact, I can easily shoot you down right here, right now. And you won't be able to do a damn thing, even with that gun. <laughs> Suddenly he laughs. Almost howling, in fact, I have just told him the best joke he's heard all his life. The only thing missing is for him to kneel over and start rolling around the floor, all while I do my best not to sock him in sock him the sorry end of my pistol. You have guts, feathers. You have guts. Did you hear what you just told me? You've just threatened me inside my own house. My own home. You know what I'm thinking right now? In another lifetime, we would have probably gotten along well. He's right on that. At least I might have ended up like him if I didn't have the Professor Andrew, Rebecca, Zack, and Isabel. If I'm mistaken, it would have been too late for me. If this laughter rings all of this possibility I could have lived, but I've never been given the choice. Because I have other people with me, people who care. A sobering realization. 
but not so much when suddenly his chuckling stops. The two heart beats, he marches towards me, grabs my collar, and aims his gun right at my head. Luke, no! At this distance, a slight flick of that finger on the trigger will be able to do more than kill me. Is it that you people really want with me? This is the third time this week, and I'm really getting weary of this little game. Wait, third time? We only entered his house once. Who's the other? Did the NCA send you to apprehend me, or has somebody paid you off to kill me? Oh wait, the other time was because Hannah. Oh, he's probably referring to that third time. Or well, technically this is the third time, but the first time was that. Which one is it, Feathers? Mind you, my arm's getting tired. Better answer quick if you don't want to beat the business end of this gun. Keep my eyes trained on him. Despite the huge threat he possesses right now, because if there's anything people like him, I also prefer it's honesty. Don't give them an impression without keeping a solid eye contact. I'm not with NCA. I'm just here to help. There's something else in this house, and we're all in danger. You have to believe me, right? You need to let us go. You need to get out of here before it's too late. If you want to keep your sorry ass alive, you'll listen to people with more brain cells than you. Why, you insolent! His finger moves, but I'm prepared. My hand ready to reach up, disarm him, and knock him out. I have to drag him out of this place unconscious to keep him from suffering the of every other person who has died from this curse, so be it. However, before either of us can fire a shot or tackle the other to the ground, the voice echoes throughout the foyer. Small little thing compared compared to the compared the, to the storm raging outside it rings above it, nevertheless causing all of us to stop and turn. Hannah, top of the staircase. Hannah Wright stands. To make matters worse, that thing's behind her, menacing and rotting hand wrapped firmly around her neck. She looks like death. Pale and shaky, eyes red with tears. Nearly don't hear her as she pleads. Dirk, help me. Please. What the heck? Side of another streak of lightning flashes and clap of thunder ripples across the sky. In death's grip? What does that mean? Is that this whole thing can't get any more fuber, fubar than it already is. I really hope she doesn't die. Cause she did survive, I'm just unsure how this will go. Given where she is, she could potentially maybe die. She falls down all those stairs, but at the same time, I mean as a bell fell down the stairs where she's lived. But still it's dangerous. Now we play as Luke. Where does his story start off? Uh, what? Oh wait, oh, it's just profiles, whoops. Now we have Luke and his vine. Is there one your old presidency? Oh, he's an atheist! But Ray is angelic. Okay. Huh. Okay. So to say that I'm scared of what's happening is a gross understatement. Trouble of any sort is the last thing I want to get home after a long day at work, trip to the bar. When I see hand near near prostrate, I can only feel dread. Twitches and seizes my body wound my body wound and coiled tight before tr trashing, shuddering, shaking. The woman possessed mouth falls open, her eyes roll to the back of her head. It has the hallmark signs of seizure. Whoops whoops wait. Symptoms what? Wait, symptoms are similar similar enough. That knowledge, the fact that I know this only makes me feel worse. Oh, we're starting from this point when she was getting freaked out. Oh, but to hold her close is all I can do while she trashes about. Um also let me just look at the relationship. <laughs> Um, of course, Ash, Isabel. I mean, it, it, it literally doesn't matter what we do with Zack. 
because he's dead. Uh, but told her close is all I can do while she trashes about. I know this is wrong, but I'm not supposed to hold her down. Yet yeah, I do have instinct. Reflex, even. This is after the party, so we're actually not that far now that I remember. Okay, so, you're uh, hurting her. I see no other ways to keep Hannah from hurting herself. Oh. It takes a lot to keep myself from running off to get help when she needs me here. It takes everything I have to keep myself intact. When she says my name, I realize that the seizures have stopped. That doesn't make the dread go away. Please! What happened here? Who did this to you? I don't know. I am so sorry. Sigh of her hair streaked, fa streaked face is enough to twist the knife in. It does not help that I'm as lost as she is right now. And all I can say is... Shh, it's alright. You're safe now, Hana. You're safe now. I just sat there in the kitchen, cradling Hannah in my arms for an eternity until my house and a maid ran in, seeming the worst. She had been screaming enough to attract the attention of anyone on Mansion's property. That's all well and good in the end. I suppose as they help carry Hannah up to our bedroom, now I can have managed it on my own. I have slipped on the stairs and cracked both our hand heads if I tried. If Jurassic and Maid does a short work of making her comfortable while well, sit on the sidelines. I have no idea how long I remained there, just watching them and her. But at some point after they've left us, the sun has set, leaving the room dark and silent. Nestled in all the pillows and blankets put on her side though, Hannah looks smaller than ever. She looks so weak and vulnerable that I can't help but worry. Not to mention the children. What about the children? What know how such an event could affect babies in the womb? Now seems like a good time to get drunk as any. Which, before we continue, actually, um... Yeah, I'm going to end the video here, because I really hate how the game keeps ending with such a huge potential cliffhanger of like, what was supposed to happen after to, hey, everything's sort of calm though, with this, it's still like, what did happen after this event? So yeah, um, yeah, I'll just end the video here, so um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, Click the like button if you want to see more of what's going to happen next. Because I'm probably going to keep playing. It's like 2 in the morning. Um, yeah. Just go to the subscribe button to be notified of anything I do. Um, and if you got anything to say, say it in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Comrades.